All right, so let's dive into the contents. Now, people always say that you should begin at the beginning. And you might think the beginning of this topic is the algebra that you've learned already. The algebra with integers, rational numbers, and real numbers. And that certainly will be the beginning of your conceptual understanding of this new field. However, in some sense, this is not the beginning. Mathematicians go back farther than that. There's a lot of things about integers, rational numbers, and real numbers that you take for granted that you don't really know why they're true. Now, one example, for instance, is uh, we know that any number can be written as the product of prime factors. I'm sorry, every integer can be written as the product of prime factors. Why is this true? How do you know? When you divide one integer by another, you get a result and then you get a remainder. And that remainder is always less than the number that's uh, being divided by. Uh, so why is that true? How do you know that's true? These are basic facts that we take for granted. Now, a mathematician doesn't take anything for granted. Mathematicians try to dig their way back to the very beginning. They find the most basic assumptions they can and they call these axioms. Then they use these axioms to build up proofs. And they use these proofs to prove every statement and give it a rigorous, solid foundation. Now, if we were to do that with the material that we have here, that would take us a long time and it would be uh, very difficult and I think very frustrating for the student. So we are going to start with the knowledge that you have. We are going to start with high school and college algebra and assume those things are true. We'll try to characterize that knowledge as much as possible. But just be aware that that's not really the beginning. There are axioms on which your notions of arithmetic are based. And you can look up the piano axioms on the web to see the rigorous foundations of arithmetic. So as I said, we're going to make use of what you know, what you've learned about integers, rational numbers, and real numbers, and we're going to summarize some important properties that you've been exposed to. Now pay attention to this warning. The properties that we're going to talk about are only safely assumed for integers, rational numbers, and real numbers. We will find other number systems in which these properties do not hold. This is a common mistake of students to assume that another number system has these properties that, that you assume for integers, rational numbers, and real numbers. Just to give a small example, if we talk about integers and we have two x integers x and y, we often talk about x over y. And we know what that means. That's going to be a rational number. Now, there are cases where you really cannot talk about x over y. For instance, you can do this for integers. That's OK. Now, if you're talking about matrices, that's not OK. You cannot always write this notation. Just to give you a little foretaste, for matrices, you can't write x over y. You either have to write x, y inverse or uh, y inverse x. And those two things might be different. So I just give this example to show you that you cannot assume the properties that you are familiar with will also hold for other number systems. Let's look at some of these properties. Commutative, associative, and distributive. These are the three big ones. I hope you've heard about these before. If you haven't, then you'll just have a crash course on what they mean. These are some other properties of the uh, real, rational, and integer numbers. They should be familiar. For instance, if you add 0 to any number or you multiply any number by 1, then there's no change in the original number. Okay. So exercise 1 is to test your understanding. You're to take each of these statements and to give a specific example using addition and also a general statement using variables for multiplication. All right, so what do I mean by that? Let's do, for instance, for, for property A, commutative. Two numbers can be either added or multiplied in any order 
and yield the same result. What does that mean for addition? Well, a specific example is 3 plus 5 equals 5 plus 3. You've changed the order, you haven't changed the result. A general statement for multiplication is x times y equals y times x. You can multiply two numbers. The x and y represent general numbers, and you can multiply them in any order without changing the value. Exercise 2 shows that these properties do not necessarily hold for all operations. For instance, subtraction is not commutative, division is not associative. Give a specific example to show each of these statements. Exercise 3 is a foretaste of proof. We want to use these properties in order to draw conclusions about numbers. Okay, so here are some given facts about A and B. A and B are variables, so they represent numbers. You can assume they represent real numbers. They're not being specific. Okay, so we know A is greater than B, B is greater than or equal to 0, and AB equals to 0. So what can you conclude about A and B? I want you to go back and look at these properties, find a property or a couple of properties that are relevant, and apply the property to this situation to draw a conclusion about A and B. And to give you a hint, you can, draw, you can say something about B and you can say something about A. Okay. That's kind of your first introduction to proof. Exercise 4 is to test your understanding of the practical meaning of these properties. If you look at each one of these, these are all true statements that are true in general for, n for any value of the variables. And you need to give the properties that are used in order to conclude these equalities. For instance, look at the first one. Okay. What have we used here to make this in to to confirm this inequal this equality. All right, x plus y plus z plus w equals z plus w plus x plus y. What have we done? Well we've exchanged the order of x plus y and z plus w. In this case on the left hand side x plus y is first, z plus w is second. In the left on the right hand side z plus w is first, x plus y is second. What property is that? Well I think I've given you enough of a hint for you to figure that out. Now, in some of these questions, you may need more than one property. You have to list only the properties that are needed. So, for instance, in the first one, only one property is sufficient. In the others, you may need more than one property. So make sure you list all the properties and make sure you don't list extra ones. All right, now notice up here we have lots of parentheses. Often when we do mathematics, we don't have to do so many parentheses. For instance, instead of writing a plus b plus c, we may simply write a plus b plus c without any parentheses. Because we know it doesn't matter which order we do the plus. For instance, if we have 5 plus 3 plus 2, that's going to give me 10. That's the same thing as 5 plus 3 plus 2. Now, to compute this result, we have to do it either this way or this way, but the way we do it doesn't matter, so we might as well just write it simply as a plus b plus c without any parentheses. So this enables us to simplify many expressions. Okay. In fact, we can write any arithmetic expression without parentheses if we use the associative and the distributive property. Okay, when you do that, you should always remember order of operations. You do multiplication before addition. So 3 times 4 plus 2, that's the, you take 3 times 4 first, and then 2. You don't take 4 plus 2 first, and then multiply by 3. If you do that, you get a different result, right? 3 plus 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. Now, if you did it the wrong way, and you did 4 plus 2 first, that would be 6. Multiply by 3 gives 18. That's the wrong answer. Make sure you do your order of operations correctly. So in exercise 5, what you're supposed to do is use only associative and distributive to remove the parentheses from these expressions. Okay, for instance, in the first expression here, look here we have x plus y plus y plus z. 
Now, if you're going to compute, this tells you exactly the order you compute. First you take x plus y, then you take y plus z, and you add them together. Right? But we know from associative property, it doesn't matter the order. We could just write this as x plus y plus y plus z, and we know that that's the same thing as x plus 2y plus z. All right? So we can replace everything inside this parenthesis here with x plus 2y plus z. All right. So, and then you go on from there. You simplify from there. All right. Make sure you only use associative and distributive. You're not allowed to use commutative at this point. Okay, that's exercise five. Exercise six, now you're allowed to use commutative. You can do further simplifications of these three answers to get you a better, easier expression. Now, exercise seven is to test your understanding of order of operations. Make sure you do the operations order correctly and don't use a calculator. Now, we know a big part of algebra is simplifying equations. And in order to simplify equations, we need to have rules. So in this section, we'll talk about the rules that enable you to transform and manipulate equations and inequalities. Inequalities are also important. Of course, there are two types of inequalities, the strict inequalities that have less than or greater than symbols, and the non-strict inequalities, which allow for greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. Now, here are some rules that can be used to transform equations to make them more simple. Substitution, very common technique in simplifying equations. Balanced operations, ba basically doing the same thing to both sides. The, in some cases, if you multiply or divide by a negative value, you're going to change the inequality. doesn't matter for the equality. Okay. And here we talk about reducing fractions. That's something else that can be done. All right. And in exercise 8, you're supposed to give specific examples for each statement above. Okay. For parts A and B, give one example for equality, one for strict inequality, and one for non-strict inequality. For instance, part A. If I was going to do part A for strict inequality, well, let's, use, let's do greater than. This says, if two quantities are equal, then one can be substituted for the other in any true equation or in inequality, and the result will still be true. So, for instance, I have 3 plus 5 equals 4 plus 4. And I also have 4 plus 4 is greater than 7. All right. Now what substitution says is that I can substitute this 3 plus 5 in for the 4 plus 4, and I still have a correct result. So 3 plus 5 is greater than 7. Okay. So this would be an acceptable inequality example for substitution. Okay. Now, one very important aspect of high school college algebra is exponentiation. And this is extremely important because exponentiation is something that is in common between your regular algebra and abstract algebra. What does exponentiation mean? Exponentiation means you take something and you multiply it by itself repeatedly. Now, in abstract algebra, we have other operations beside multiply, but we can still take that operation repeatedly. So in a sense, we still have exponentiation. So you really need to know your exponent rules. Very, very important. And here's a list of exponent rules. And what you need to do in exercise 9 is write each rule as a general equation. For instance, look at part 1. Any non-zero number raised to the power 0 is equal to 1. So what's a general equation that expresses that, pro that property? Well, uh, it means that if I take any x and raise it to the 0 power, it's equal to 1, as long as x is unequal to 0. Okay? Do the same thing for 2, 3, 4, and 5. All right, exercise 10 is similar. 
write an equation to show when you uh, raise something to a power that's a difference of two numbers. Okay. And section 2.3, put these rules to practice and you can and, and use it to simplify these expressions. This is just plain old uh, college high school algebra. Just use the rules that you're familiar with. I just want to make sure that you're really very familiar with these rules and very proficient. Okay, that's the end of our video for chapter two. Enjoy. <laughs>